Hey everyone, thanks for stopping by. I was asked to fabricate a replacement for a lost knob on this lovely Takihara folding view camera. I did so, and the knob I fabricated may be seen on the bottom right corner of the camera, and only lacks the gold plating of the original hardware. The mate of the missing knob, as seen here, was still on the camera, so I had that to go by. The face of the knob is hollowed out, followed by a smaller cylindrical bore, and then an M4 by 0.75 threaded hole, as depicted at right. The knob also incorporates an asymmetrical curved neck. While the basic dimensions of the knob could be easily ascertained, the variable curvatures involved could only be approximated. In other words, I would have to proceed by the seat of my pants. I began with a piece of brass bar stock and turned it down to the overall diameter of the knob, which was about 20 millimeters or roughly a little more than three quarters of an inch. A second pass will bring it to size. Next, the sub-diameter is turned in preparation for machining the groove that contains the variable curvature. That's really close, and with another light pass, it'll be right on the money. On the bench grinder, I modified a couple of high-speed steel form cutters left over from other projects. Basically, it's a cut-and-try method, shaping the tool by hand on the grinder and frequently checking it against a sample knob. Neither shape is a simple radius, and I think I got close enough so that one would have to view the original and replacement knobs side by side to notice the difference. So now I'm using the form tool to cut the shaped groove. The tool is plunged to depth and then moved slightly to the left to produce a smooth shoulder. There is a slight ridge line left at the shoulder and I removed that off camera. When I say off camera, what I really mean is that I forgot to film it. Now it's time to knurl the part before it's turned around for machining of the front side. I don't have knurls that exactly match the pitch of the original, so something a little coarser will have to do. I'm using a common scissors or clamp knurling tool and feeding by hand. I'll generally apply some pressure and then traverse back and forth, apply more pressure, traverse back and forth again, etc, etc. Rinse and repeat as the saying goes. Then it's time to have a look.
Okay, I can see right off the bat that this is not going to do. The neurals seem to be double tracking and the depth is too shallow. Now here's the secret to producing a high quality form neural. If at first you don't succeed, try and try again. It's that simple. Just keep going and keep up the pressure. Eventually the knurling wheels will find the part diameter they want to produce the perfect neural. So, keeping the first neural in place, I'm going to continue knurling right over it and then have another look. Again, this is simply not acceptable. This neural is not going to win any beauty contest. I'm looking for evidence of a three-dimensional diamond pattern, and I don't see it here. So it's back onto the part for a third try. Okay, this is more like it. The neural has finally taken shape. Looking at it with a magnifier, I can see that all it needs is just a little more depth to sharpen up those little diamond points. I'm looking for form as well as function. I want this part to look like it deserves to be gold-plated. Sometimes you get lucky and the neural comes out great the first time. And other times, it takes a bit more work, but perseverance pays off with eventual success. And here, the result is a beautiful, fully formed diamond neural. I'll finish it off with a small chamfer, just like the original knob. I almost forgot, I need to drill and tap a hole for an M4 screw. A 4 millimeter tap is kind of fragile if you're the least bit careless. I'm not going to power tap all the way to the bottom of a blind hole, so I'll finish it by hand.
I'm using the south end of a caliper to mark the position of the parting tool. Next, I'll part it to length, turn it around, and finish the other side. Here's the knob turned around for the machining of the front face. I'm not terribly fond of holding an end mill in a drill chuck, but in this case it's certainly the easiest way to produce the required flat bottom hole. Here's the other form tool that will be used to hollow out the front face. Sorry that the tool holder blocks the view here. But the chips can be seen flying, and I back away the carriage periodically so the progress may be seen. That looks pretty good. It's difficult to measure because it's not a simple cylindrical bore. With the addition of a small chamfer, it's essentially done. Here's the newly minted knob on the left next to an original knob on the right. Except for the matte gold plating, I think it's a pretty decent replica and I'm quite happy with it. Here it is in its proper place on the body of the camera. Here's looking at you, kid. Thanks for watching.